Hi, it's Greg Gorner, Vice President and Senior Investment Advisor at Canaccord Genuity Wealth Management and Gorner Wealth Management. Welcome to the channel where we help you make sense of the financial world. So today, I'm going to be joined by Martin Roberge, Canaccord Genuity, North American uh, Analyst and Senior Managing Director. Martin, welcome. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. And, and thank you for having me on your show. Always, always a pleasure. Now, you just, on your latest quantitative strategist, we were talking yesterday, and you had some uh, concerns about the market and maybe a potential for a rate shock uh, coming up here and maybe a bit of a, maybe kind of a temper tantrum in the markets going forward here. So I just wanted to share your thoughts on what are your concerns and what, you know, where do you see things at in the market right now? Yeah, there's a concern relative to um, interest rates. Um, we, uh, we're seeing what we call a cost push inflation uh, cycle, whereby the, uh, the re reopenings, the fast reopening, along with the shortage, short, shortage of, of supply when it comes to some components is such that um, inflation, uh, what we call primary inflation um, is, um, is rising at a fast pace and and our concern is that um, as the lab labor market continues to tighten and companies and certainly producers and manufacturers continue to pass on price increases to, to their clients and customers, eventually uh, we end up into a scenario where inflation might not be as transitory, transitory than what the uh, Federal Reserve uh, believes for now. So I'm, I'm concerned that over the summer, um, the, the Federal Reserve, like the Bank of Canada just did a few weeks ago, capitulates and, and embrace the, the market expectations with regards to um, the, uh, the first interest rate hike or a tapering of its uh, quantitative easing program and that would be, in other words, meaning that they're taking off their foot from the gas pedal, not pushing on the brakes, mm -hmm. but taking the what the foot, the right foot out, out of the of the gas gas pedal. And 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 the market, uh, I I'm not sure the market is 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 yet uh, pricing this possibility, and uh, and that would be what we call a, a rate shock not a growth shock. So we've seen many growth shocks over the past several several years or growth scares. But yeah. uh, this time it would be more of a rate shock. And historically, this is not unusual a year or two following a, a recession. This time it's happening more rapidly because central banks afford more liquidity or injected more liquidity into the economy. But the net result is the same. There's always a rate shock somewhere in 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 the pipe, and it's 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 probably coming over over the summer, and 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 again, and again rate shocks normally are are temporary uh, bumps or speed bumps, mm -hmm. but ne nevertheless, given the valuation of the market, which we can talk about, um, uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see the first ten percent correction in a while uh, over the course of the summer. Yeah, now, now that's interesting because I want to talk to you about, you know, where you see the market right now. But the other thing I want to talk to you about a little bit is this has been an odd recession because typically, and we've had this conversation, you have a V uh, where everything sells off and then companies begin to restock relatively quickly once uh, you get monetary stimulus in. But it's been a little bit different this time. And, and, and you've been making some notes about the restocking has, has been much yeah. slower than usual. So can we talk about that yeah. just a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. The restocking is, as you know, through the pandemic, um, companies could not have uh, goods to sell. So what, what they did is just drawing down, drawing down their inventories that they had it. And then probably halfway through the pandemic, they started to reorder. And uh, we started gradually in the U.S. in the third quarter. And then, surprise, surprise, we have those uh, supply issues uh, uh, preventing a, a normal restocking. That's number one. Number two, uh, transportation bottlenecks, as you know, 
Right. Uh, there are no more cargoes we can use to ship stuff. So, well, there are some cargoes, uh, obviously, left, but there are fewer and fewer. Um, and um, the price of shipping has also gone up. And I would say the third factor is probably why we are seeing a slower restocking cycle is that governments have been taking this stop and go attitude towards lockdowns. And then like one week we would open up and then a week after the government would announce that we, we locked down again. So imagine you're, you're a manufacturing or a restaurant operator and then you build your inventories uh, as the governments are announcing a reopening and then <laughs> one or two weeks later, they, they shut down the economy again. So we've seen this movie a couple of times. And, yeah. and my, my sense is that uh, those business operators are saying, I've said, you know what, enough is enough. I'm not going to take the risk of building my inventories just to see the government like uh, lock, locking down uh, the economy uh, without, without any notice. Uh, and and this has been this this has been the problem, and why we're we're not seeing a, a a strong restocking cycle. And that begs the question, Greg, is that we know that the next time they announce a reopening, they will mm -hmm. not come back, walk back. Right. They will not shutting down. So if you are, like again, like a, a manufacturing company you're going to go out there and order as much as you can because you know they are not going to shut down the economy. But if everyone does it at mm. the same time, you're going to see further cost push inflation. Okay? Well, exactly, because yeah. Cons consumers, retailers, wholesalers will be price takers. Just get, give, me, like, give me the products that I need. Mm. And you're seeing the same behavior in the housing market right now. So yep. what you're seeing in the housing market is exactly what will will happen at the manufacturing level, and cost push and cost, like cost inflation is likely to be around for at least another year. And if I'm right about this profit margin squeeze, uh, eventually, if the market starts to look at 22 earnings and say, you know what, maybe the earnings are too high because corporate taxes are rising. Yeah. And our margins are getting squeezed because of higher input cost. Well, this is not good news when the market is trading at lofty multiples, such as where we are in the U.S. right now. That's why I'm pledging investors to continue playing the rest of this this bull market in, in non-U.S. equities and especially Canadian equities. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a good point, too. Why don't we walk our way back to, you know, similar expansions, maybe, you know, going back to, you know, uh, 2009, 2010, or maybe 73. Uh, how does this kind of valuation wise, how, how does this look compared to that? And, uh, and maybe what keeps you up at night these days? Yeah, the, the valuation of the U.S. equity market, uh, like we're using vi like different models, but there's one um that flagged uh, 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 uh well actually that um flagged a, a, a that, that that rose a, a red flag certainly on uh on us stocks last month the april rally was such that for the first time since spring 2000 or spring 73 uh like the the market was well it became outright overvalued mm -hmm. um and we know that the corrections that followed those peaks were not like single digit corrections. Um, so yeah. valuation wise, um, the only difference with those episodes is that the bond market is not an alternative. Looking yeah, back to 2073, yeah. you could rotate out of stocks into bonds and that, that, that was, your 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 typical rotation or protection uh, mm. for your asset mix right now bonds are probably as overvalued as stocks so investment as, as investment advisors like you have to work harder to to, to find the right asset class within mm. which to rotate to protect uh, your your client's capital 
And the, because the bond market is so overvalued, uh, I don't think that the correction will be as severe as the one we had in 2000 or 73, but it's going to be more than just 10%. So mm-hmm. um, I think there's still, uh, I don't think we're at a top, okay? Yeah. Uh, but a top is coming. And, and the point of correction, like the correction from the upcoming top will be a correction of more than 10%. Um, uh, um, unless I'm wrong on, on the bond yields, uh, but if if I do believe that yields are rising because central banks are 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 having a, are a second thought on their first tightening move or, or tapering right. move, uh, well, it, it will shock the market. Yeah, I mean, and that's not unexpected or, or that's not unprecedented. These, as you mentioned before, you, rate shocks happen, and they're not a sign of the end of the of the economic expansion. They are just part of the process. Yeah. Yeah. This is the big difference because don't forget the worst enemy for stocks are economic recessions. <laughs> when you have a growth shock or a growth scare, all of the recessions are higher than when you have a rate shock because a rate shock is because the economy is growing too fast. Yeah. Eventually, if rate shocks are, are too big, uh, central banks perform what we call a monetary overkill. Yeah. They raise rates too fast and too much and too fast. We're not there. Okay? No. We're not going to see that. Okay. So this is why uh, it's kind of a, a speed bump um, uh, uh, down the road uh, and, and not like a, 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 a call on a pending recession. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, it, but still, when these corrections occur, people tend to, to panic and overdo it on, on, on selling too much of their, their exposure. What we're, the message we're sending to investors today is that the liquidity of the market is so poor when you try selling in a falling market, then yeah. try to scale out. Why don't you scale out? On the on the on on this probably next next bounce, mm-hmm. and and then raise some cash as, as for for when eventually the market gives you an opportunity to buy stocks at cheaper multiples. Yeah, always good advice. Why don't we leave it there? Thank you so much for taking the time just to share your 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 latest thoughts. Uh, makes a lot of sense to me, and uh, hope you can join us again. Appreciate it, Martin yeah. Robert. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Bye-bye.